in humility and with my heart filled with love for my dearest, sweetest, beloved Bhagawan and all of his creation, including all of you, I offer my humble pranams at the Divine Lotus Feet. Sai Ram. Sai Ram. I thank uh, Jean and all the officers of the center and all of you and of course my beloved Swami for bringing me here today and giving me the opportunity to share his love with you all. Thank you. So what do you want me to share about Swami today? What, what do you expect me to say? <laughs> Anything special or I can just go on? Just go on. Okay, his Maya, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, no, I said inspire. Oh, just inspire, okay, sorry. So really, I, I, I was wondering when Jean invited me, uh, I was wondering what I should speak about. And I always let Swami speak to me. I do not prepare much, I just make a few notes about certain things that Swami has said. I do not want to make any mistakes on that. So I, I got this thought in my head to speak about the most important miracle of our dearest beloved Lord. And as you know all, it's the miracle of transformation. That is what he came down here for. He came, God came on an earth to transform every one of us and take us back home. He said many a time, the plane is taking off, the train is taking off, it's time for you to get on the flight. And I have come here to take you. I remember once before, uh, one of the professors at, uh, at the university, uh, we had all gone in, I think, 2005. It was a regional group. I don't know how many of you were there with that group. He told us this incredible story. I still get goosebumps when I hear that, when I hear myself speaking about it. He said that there was this Swami, you know, there are many ashrams in India, and this one Swami from this ashram came to see uh, our Bhagawan, and he came to really inquire what is going on here, because there's millions of people going there. And he was sitting there and thinking, you know, this is a very strange ashram. His people are coming here. It's not like the usual ashram in India. People are coming here, they are sitting down here, all wearing white, ladies beautifully dressed up with all their jewelry and everything. They are sitting here, clapping hands, singing bhajans very happily. Then they get up, they go, they have three beautiful, very nice canteens to eat food from. They have nice accommodation. They get. This is so different to the regular ashram. The regular ashram has all these austerities. As you go there, you shave your head off, all the hair off, and then you, you know, do all these uh, meditation, all these, all these austerities, and you're fasting, you're doing all these things. That is not happening here. This is something is different in this place. And this was bothering him. And then, of course, our beloved Swami, you know how he is, we all know how he is. He was going in darshan and he walks up to this, uh, this uh, Swami and asks him, uh, what do you want? You know, Swami's usual question. And this, this thing was bothering this person so much, he blurted out with this and he said, Swami, I, uh, what is going on in this ashram? What is this? People are doing not, they are not doing anything austerity. They are not even meditating. They are just coming here, sing bhajans and go and have a good time. And Swami smiled at him. This is very important. This is so profound. We must never forget that. I, I always remember this. Swami pointed at all the people, 20,000 people sitting in the Kulvan Hall and said, all these people who are sitting here, all these things you are talking about, they have done in their previous lifetimes. And this lifetime, I'm getting goosebumps as I speak, this lifetime they came here on earth and they are here today only to have my darshan. 
And if they follow my teachings, they will also go back home with me. Just imagine, brothers and sisters, just imagine. Swami has called all of us. We had his darshan. He brought us to him. Some of us like me, I was a really, really crazy guy. I do not know if to, to date why he brought me to him. You know, before, before I, I was born in Sri Lanka, I was Sri Lankan. Not, and while back home in Sri Lanka, of course, Swami gave me lots and lots of money. And, and uh, he gave us everything, everything we wanted. And we really misused it. I used to go to, I was a member of all the major clubs in Sri Lanka. I used to go party all the time. I would sit and drink a bar. I'm very ashamed to say this. Uh, I would sit and drink a bottle of scotch by myself at any party. And, and uh, you know, we used to do everything. Of course, one thing I did not do, my wife and I, we never hurt anybody. That we did not do. That was from our birth. We did not have any bad feelings towards anybody. So, but we did the partying, we did all that. Then we came here to the US 25 years ago. We f went through with the same thing, same story all over again. So, Swami gave us as much money as we wanted. Everything was provided. And here we misused it. And, and then I think Swami thought it's about time. These guys, you know, I do not know why, why Swami always says, do not try to fathom me, do not try to find out who I am. He suddenly decided to bring us to his fold. And I thank Swami uh, from the bottom of my heart for doing that for us. Because we thought we were happy, it is only now I really understand what true happiness is. He took away all our money. He took away so many, everything from us. To start with, what he did was, he knew that he had to do something drastic. So he made my wife very, very ill. Some of you know that. She has an incurable disease. Doctor will tell you. He, she is a myasthenia gravis patient. There is no cure for it. It's where your own immune system goes, you know, crazy and attacks your nerve centers and you get paralyzed. It's you, you, you just cannot move. And she was in bed for seven years. She was so, so many times she was in and out of UCLA uh, and uh, life and death situation. But what happened was when this happened, uh, we, my wife got really angry with God because though we were, you know, party animals, if you call, if you may want to call it, uh, we every Saturday we used to go to Mailupu Temple here, even here, every Saturday. We used to, that was our standard thing, and we did not hurt people, and we had a lot of faith in God. Uh, and my wife was very, very upset. She said, "You know, we are not hurt, and we are not bad, we, are, we have not done anything wrong to others." And why did God do that? It's not only that, Swami did not stop there. He gave me uh, pneumonia in both my lungs. I had pneumonia in both my lungs. And I did not know anything. I did not have a cold. I did not have fever. I had nothing. I got up one morning with, I couldn't breathe. I, ha I felt as if somebody was taking a firebrand in my lungs. I, I couldn't breathe. I thought I was getting a heart attack. I, I, was, I thought I was dying. I, and my children rushed me to hospital. When, uh, when we got there, the doctor told my son, in five minutes, I will let you know whether your father is going to live or die. I was in ICU for six days. Up to date, I cannot remember what happened during that six days. And uh, so that's the second thing he did. And the third thing he did was, my son was married, he had just got married, just one and a half years, and he was separating from his wife because uh, they could not have children. <coughs> uh, it, it is a complicated thing. Anyway, so he was getting separated. Thank you, Siva. Then the third thing, the fourth thing that happened, you know, the last, you know, Swami, once he decides, he gives, keeps giving you all that. So 
the fourth thing that was happening was my daughter was engaged to get married to one of my close, very close friend's sons from Sri Lanka. And suddenly they decided to, you know, they got engaged, they were about to get married, the dates were set too, and suddenly they decided, you know, not to go through with this. This is bad for us. You know, we are Asians, you are Indians, you are Sri Lankans. It's kind of very, uh, you know, difficult for us as parents. So this, these three things happen one after another. And uh, I used to smoke, I used to drink, I used to do all that. And the doctor told me once I was okay and he was releasing me. He said, uh, Mr. Balasurya, this is a real miracle. I do not know what to tell you. You have smoked for 40 years. So smoke 40 cigarettes a day for, for 40 years. And your lungs are so pure and clear. It cannot be. He said, this is not possible. But he told me, if you smoke and if you get lung cancer, the pain you had will be 10 times more than what you had. I came out of hospital and I quit immediately. I did not smoke. Before that, when my wife got ill, let me take one step back. Uh, when my wife got ill, she was very ill. We did not know what to do. It was very serious. My friend from Sri Lanka is my very closest friend. He was my best man at our wedding. He was traveling to Texas to see his daughter, to be at his daughter's graduation. And they stopped over in our house in California. And. Uh, he he was he knew that my wife was ill, but he, he did not know that she was so ill. And he was a side devotee. See, so this is how Swami pulls, you know, he was a side devotee. And uh, he had, uh, in one Buddha Purnima in, in uh, India, Swami had given him, uh, his wife, a whole bunch of vibhuti packets. So he gave this to my wife and said, you know, just apply this on your body or take a little bit in your mouth. My wife refused because at that time she was up mad with God. She was upset with God because she said, I do not deserve this. We, our family do not deserve this. We are not done, they are not that bad people to have these calamities one after another. And uh, so, so she said, no, I don't, I, I'm tired. Of it. But I used to continue to go even though she was sick to Malibu Temple every Saturday. But when I come back, she does not take vibhuti, she does not take prasadam. She says, oh, it's useless. This is, there is no God. She was, that's what she was telling. So then the, my friend gave me the vibhuti packet and they left for, left for Texas. And that night I told my wife, you know, he's my really good friend. You know, he's doing this with pure heart. You know, just let me put some vibhuti on your body. Let, let, just, let, let me do that. Then she told me, do whatever you want. That's the very word she said. So that night before I went to bed, I applied vibhuti on her body. She was paralyzed, she could not walk. And, and then I put a little bit you know, in her mouth, on her tongue, and she you know, just took it. And that was it. Next morning, I got up, I went to work. Her mom was here from Sri Lanka taking care of her. She had got up in the morning, she woke up, and usually she waits for her mom to come and, you know, help her. Without even realizing, she got down from bed. She walked to the restroom and she went to the restroom and she realized, Oh my God, I'm walking. I have no pain in my body. What's, what happened? She asked herself and immediately in her head, she heard Swami's voice saying, Vibhuti, Vibhuti, Vibhuti. And it went on in her head. And she, she went back on bed and she lay down there and she was really, you know, stunned, mm -hmm. really fabulous. So, so after that, of course, to cut a long story short, uh, we, we found out that we were in Alhambra at that time. We found out where the Satsai Center was and we started going there. She did not get 100% cured, but she was, you know, was able to walk and go slowly. And we started going there little by little. And then Swami started squeezing me and transforming me, you know, because 
I did not stop my liquor, I did not stop, only that smoking I stopped because I got so scared of the lung cancer <laughs> and the pain. And uh, then after a little bit, Swami, uh, I, I suddenly found that I could not take even a glass of wine. My whole body breaks out with a rash. It, it started, you know, and it, 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 I was surprised, you know, this is somebody who's been, you know, <laughs> doing this for the last so many years and uh, and this is I, I could not even drink a glass of wine not even a drink of beer you know a sip of beer and this thing bursts out and I'm like exploding from inside and then uh, I went to my doctor who's my in my HMO you know my primary care who was my college mate back home in Sri Lanka and I told him, hey man, you and I are drinking people, come on, do something, you know, this is really crazy. You know, I, I we meet people and this is something, I, we, you know. We, and then he gave me some antihistamine. <laughs> so he told me, or something, I don't know what he gave me. He said, take this tablet, 15 minutes before you take a drink and you then you can take a drink. So, you know, just imagine what a fool I was. Just imagine, can you just imagine <laughs> how foolish we are, you know, how foolish and how much Swami, God reaches out to bring you to Him. How much effort He takes to do that. You know, that is really, really sad sometimes when we think of ourselves. That we are, we are so, so ignorant, so foolish, that we do not know that here God is here and He's trying to call us to His lotus feet. Excuse me, I have allergies, so I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, Jay <Jason>, said, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so, so, so then, uh, so then, uh, uh, I was saying about my uh, drinking, right? Yeah. So when uh, I could not uh, take anything, and then he told me to do this. So a couple of months I did this and I'm thinking, what is, even then I cannot drink hard liquor. I just can't drink a beer or something like that. And suddenly my thought, now we are, go, in the meantime, we are going to Arcadia Center too. You know, we are going to the center, but I'm still doing this. And we are still eating meat and, you know. Then I, then I, I thought to myself, what is, what am I doing? You know, why am I doing this? And I had a huge wet bar in our room, in our, in our house, you know, very big wet bar with all the high quality liquors and, you know, whatever you name it, it was there. And one day, uh, Dr. Mrs. Heimer Reddy, Dr. Reddy's wife, calls me and says, I'm coming there to see Semali, visit Semali, because my wife was not 100% okay yet, you know. So now, when she comes to my house, she has to pass this liquor bar before she goes into the bedroom, you know. So that was it. I said, no, so I'm going to stop this. I went, I started pouring all the liquor down, the everything, maybe more than $1,000 worth of liquor, maybe more than that, Swami knows all that. I poured everything down and I threw the bottles and that was it. And Swami, by His grace, I just quit. Yes, I just quit. Like cold turkey, like that, no cold turkey. Even smoking, I just quit. That's only by his, after 40 years of smoking, mm -hmm. only by his grace, I just, <clears throat> cold turkey, I quit. Then I, we were still eating meat. And then it was, you know, my wife and I started, we are Buddhists, so we started doing uh, uh, the loving kindness meditation that Buddha taught. Buddha taught the loving kindness meditation. And when we are doing this, I, when I was eating my meals and when I see some meat or fish on the plate, I, I started seeing this thing like a living, something like living. I felt that it was something living and I could not eat it. So I just put it aside and I eat the vegetables and the rice and I used to go and throw it in the trash bin, the, the, the meat and the fish. One day, about four or five days later, I see my wife doing the same thing. See, this is this is what he does. You know, you know, he this only God can do that. You know, only God can do that. We are both suddenly we realize that we are not eating, and why are we buying? So we stopped eating that. So, so we start. I stopped my. He stopped my. He stopped my smoking. He stopped my drinking, and by his grace, we stopped eating meat. Within within two months. 
we were, we were, my wife was suddenly quite well for her to travel and we went to India. That is, that is only God can do that. And just imagine how much love he has, how much love he has for him to come and just squeeze you out and bring him to you. How much effort he takes. How, do, we, do we really even, we, I cannot even fathom what, why or what he does and why he does that. That, that effort, why, why does he have to do all that? Why, why does God have to do all that? Why does he have to go to all that extent to bring us to his lotus feet? So this is something that is the most important thing we have. We are very, very, very lucky people. God himself, supreme Lord of the universe, the Parabrahma, he came on earth to take us back home. And we have to, we have to go back home this lifetime. Please remember, this is a great boon that we have received. And, and see now, little by little, little by little, so many miracles. He's showing us, giving us, all of us, in our daily lives, we see miracles happening to us. Recently, I have a new car, and uh, I was coming home with my wife on the freeway, and uh, I, I was not driving on the carpool lane, I was driving on the regular lane, and then I decided, you know, suddenly there was a block, there's some, some traffic jam, and I thought I'll get on the carpool lane. So I did a little bit of illegal thing. I crossed, <laughs> crossed the, you know, the, uh, the double line. <laughs> Swami, forgive me. Uh, and uh, and I, I, I looked back. I did not see anybody on the carpool lane. And then I looked forward, and the car in front of me was right in front of me, so I had to give a, a few minutes, seconds for it to move forward, for me to get. I did a mistake of not looking back. I just got on the carpool lane. As soon as I got on the carpool lane, I had bang, the, the horn went off. And there was a F-150 right behind me. And you wouldn't believe, you just wouldn't believe. It passed me. There is no way that the truck and my car can pass each other in, a car, in that little carpool lane. There was no shoulder space, it was only the carpool lane. I was on the carpool lane, he was on the carpool lane, and he passed me. And it didn't hit you? It didn't touch me. What was the boom then? He, 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 he sat on the horn, ah. he could not stop, he was so close to me, he just went through, but he didn't hit me. See, wow. these are things, this is, Swami is there with us every moment, right now he's here with us. And he has not let us go. Just because he left his body, he's not gone anywhere. He's here right now with us. And don't ever forget that. Just remember every moment. Why can't all the time we are so desperate for things? We are, uh, you know, we, we are all the time, we are asking, I want that, I don't like that, I like that, I, this is not good. You know, all that is negative. It goes on and on and on. By His grace, He gave me the opportunity to go and do a 10-day retreat on Vipassana meditation. You know Buddha's, what Buddha taught. And, and during that meditation, I, I, He gave me the opportunity to understand and realize that every nanosecond in our life, we are saying, I like it or I don't like it. And this is both negative. This is really both negative because I like it is desire. I don't like it is aversion. They are both negative. What happens? Through our five senses, just take the sense of the ear, hearing. Uh, we are hearing something, immediately we hear what happens. Within a nanosecond, you, 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 heard, you realize that you heard something. Then the next thing that happens to you is that you think, oh, this is a good sound or a bad sound. This is happening even without you thinking with your subconscious mind. And the next thing that happens is, you may have felt it yourself, I'm sure you, every one of us feel it. You, the mind and matter connects 
and you get a vibration that runs through your body, which is a good feeling or a bad feeling, depending on what you felt. And what happens next? This all happens in a nanosecond, even without you thinking. It says, I like it or I don't like it. I like this sound, I don't like the sound. When I realized this, I got so scared. I started crying, I couldn't stop crying. I said, how do I escape this? You know, what do we do? Well, you know, what, what? And I, I could, it, I, tears were just pouring out. What, what do I do? And then I realized that is why Swami said, this is the Kali Yuga. It's the most difficult time for human beings. And that is why he gave us the shortcut, yeah. the mantra, just say Om Sri Saira. Repeat his name. Because Swami said, today in this Kali Yuga, the thought, word and deed is not in unison. Everybody is like that. Just say Namas Magna. So we have to pray to him. We have to ask for his grace. We have to be careful but when you pray. <laughs> I used to pray, I used to pray and pray, Swami, give me seva, give me seva, give me seva. So only God, oh my God, he's downloaded all the seva on me. I work even today, sometimes till 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. And you know, so that, that so we had to be careful. Also, you had to be careful about asking for grace because I don't know whether you know about this story. This lady in the Darshan line, the Swami was walking by. And she said, Swami, I want your grace. Swami went past, she repeated. Swami turned back, Swami stopped, turned back, came to her and said, you want my grace? Yes, Swami, I want your grace. Do you know what you get when you get my grace? She said, no, Swami. Number one, I take all your money away. <laughs> this is Swami, what Swami said, you know? It happened to me. I know it has happened to other people, I know. I'll take all your money away. Number two, I'll take all your friends away. Number three, I'll take your name and fame away. And number four, you'll start getting blamed for things that you have never done. <laughs> Are you ready to accept all that? Are you ready to surrender and accept all that? If you accept all that, you have my grace. And you have my love. And what is love? Love is union with God. That is pure love. Love, otherwise we say we love you, we do that. That's all temporary. It just comes, he says, Swami says happiness is, you know, between two pains. So, you know, that we all know that. Swami keeps saying that. But what we need is pure love. Even, Swami said, even the mother's love to a child is conditional. Because the mother expects the child to love the mother back. And if the child does not love the mother back, she's very upset. So that is also conditional. That's supposed to be one of the most purest forms of love. But the purest of pure love is God's love. And once we have that, and once he, we reciprocate that, we have eternal peace. That is the time we are in union with God. So you want me to go on some more, or am I done? <laughs> Five minutes? Okay, uh, also, so love, what is love? Love is, it has to come from the heart, right? And Sami, uh, let me tell you another story. Uh, I do not know how many of you know Hari Subramaniam. He was Swami's student. He was one of the great bhajan singers. And he composed so many bhajans. And he's here somewhere in the, in the, in Northern California. When Swami was uh, building the super specialty hospital in Bangalore, he called Hari and told him, uh, you do a project, you know, you do a, write a report on how this hospital could run, how it can be managed and how it could be run. So Hari was very excited. He said, you know, God tells you to do a job like that. You know, I, I'll be excited too. Who won't be? So he spent one year, while the hospital was being built, he spent one year doing research, doing this and that. This is a brilliant guy, you know, he's a very brilliant man. And he wrote a big report. 
you know, big book, he read a big book, a big report with pictures and, you know, all that and how, how to manage the hospital, how this could be done, as if God does not know how to manage. So he's, <laughs> he's still running beautifully without any problems. But, you know, his love is so much, he makes us, gives us an opportunity to serve him. You know, we all that, you know all that, you know, you're a great, say, all these Seva people, Sibyl is there, you are the, all these, I, these are the few people I know who are so involved in, uh, in Seva, you know, all of you. So, we are so excited to do that. I'm excited to do that when I get the opportunity. So, Hari finally finished the report and Swami, he was sitting there in the veranda and Swami called him. And so Hari ran with the report and put it on Swami's lap. And you know, we are all excited to do all these things, exciting things. And uh, so he, uh, so Swami was just flipping pages. You know, Swami doesn't go page by page, he just was flipping. And Hari was stopping Swami, 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 this one, this page, this, this one, this report, this, this, this project, this project. So he kept on disturbing Swami and saying this project, that project, and you know, all that. Swami shut the book and Swami has told him, Project, project, project. You know my project? You know why I came here on earth? My project is for your heart. I came here to take your heart. And he touched Hari's heart. So we have to all give our hearts to him. We have to give our hearts to him. We have to do seva. We have to start seeing God in other people. And the only way to see God in other people is when you do seva to the needy, you start seeing the pain in the other person. You start understanding the pain of the other person as your own pain. You feel the pain of the other person. Not doing seva for the sake of doing seva. It's very easy to do that. It's very easy to put your hand in the pocket and give some money and go and buy some burritos. You know, that's what you guys do. You know, burritos and all. It's very hard, easy for somebody to do that. But to do it and go and serve it, go and meet the people and see what, feel their suffering, to feel their pain as your own pain, is your seeing God in that person. And the other thing is, if you feel the joy of another person as your own joy, so you be joyful of another person's joy, you are seeing God in that person. So you and that person becomes one, because you are joyful at that, of that person's joy. And you are your pain, you have the pain of that, feel the pain of that person. So that is the start of seeing God in another person. That is how you start seeing that. So that, isn't that incredible? Isn't that wonderful? And why can't we do that? When I go downtown, if you notice, I know most of you come downtown, I don't go and serve the food. What I do is I stand at the top of the line and I say, good morning, sir, thank you for coming. <coughs> I, some of them shake my hand, some of them hug me. You know, those days I used to be so scared of all these huge, you know, <laughs> African-Americans, especially I, when we came to this country, when I see them coming on the road, if I just be, my wife and I used to cross the road and go to the other side. Oh. The, you know, we were afraid, you know, we did not know, you know. Yeah. But now we know, we know that we feel the pain and when I do that, I see they're coming, you know, you, you cheer them up, you give them, some people are of course still, you know, they're sleepy, they're covered in the blankets and all that. But some people, oh, thank you, sir, God bless you, thank you for coming. Then I tell them, no, we have to thank you because we are here because you're here. You have given us the opportunity. If you're not here, we won't be here. So we are thankful to you. And they smile, they give a big smile. So. So, the, see, this is, I'm, I feel their happiness, I feel their, uh, or I feel their pain, so that's what we had to do, we had to start understanding uh, what, uh, how the other person's pain, and feel that as your own, and be joyful as, of the other person's joy, and then we will start, that is the beginning of seeing God in others, and that is, filling your heart with love. And finally, as I said, pure love is and happiness is a union with God. Jai Saram.